this lesson, we'll learn how to improvise jazz. We'll do that by dividing the subject into 10 small and easy steps. And we'll find out that playing a jazz solo may not be so difficult and mysterious after all. Now, let me demonstrate the sound we can make when we have learned and practiced all 10 steps. Play along with the drum and bass backing track I've made for the occasion. A little jam in C. Right now we hear a fast version of the backing track. But I have also made a slow version. In the last section of this video, after having examined the 10 steps, you can try out all the stuff we have learned and play along with the backing track, both in a slow and a fast version. I will paste a time code link to the backing tracks in the description below. This is a new jazz lesson, by the way, and my name is Oliver Play. Now, let's stop this fast speed backing track. Instead, we'll turn on turn on the slow speed version. By slowing down the speed. We can all follow the ideas presented in this lesson, and it will be easier to grasp what's going on. Now, here comes step one. The first thing we need to do is to clarify the rhythm of the band. For some, this may seem as very common stuff, but this is also very important. And don't worry. We will move on very soon. So, listen to the drums and bass. Here we have the main beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. And listen. Each main beat is divided into three sub beats. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Two, three, one. This two-layered rhythmic pattern is very important to recognize before playing anything. Main beats. One, two, three, four. Sub beats. One, two, three, 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 ba da di ba da di ba da di ba Okay, let's move on to step Two, put your thumb on the C note and your index finger on the E flat note. And we have this two finger hand grip. Play the two notes alternately on the sub beats like this. This may seem too easy, but don't fool yourself. Make sure that you follow the band and that you are 100% steady and precise on the beats before moving on. When we are ready, we proceed to step 3. This step is about playing swing 8. This is done simply by leaving out the second subbeat. So we'll play only the first and the third subbeat. It sounds like this. One, three, one, three, one, three, one, di, da, di, da, di, da, di, da. Again, be steady. Make it sound good. Try to 
switch between playing all the sub beats and swing it. One, three, one, three, one, three, one, two, 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 three, one, three, one, three, one. Can you hear? Music is about to come. But we still miss all the stuff. So let's move on to step four. Now we'll try to emphasize some of the subbeats. When playing, for example, swing eights, we can emphasize the third subbeat like this. Often in jazz, we emphasize the off beats. But it is not a fixed rule. We can also emphasize the main beats like this. Try to switch between these two options. Now try also to play all three sub beats and try to emphasize some of them. Make it sound good. Try to get a nice feeling into this. By making these accented notes, we make music more alive. something very important. So, here comes step five. Now, listen what happens when we add some breaks. By adding breaks, we automatically create small phrases. on different subbeats. So, try to kick off a phrase on, for example, the third subbeat, like this. Or maybe on the second subbeat, like this. Okay, to begin a phrase on a main beat like this. But in jazz, it's more common to do things off beat. Try also to cut off a phrase on different sub beats. For example, on the third subbeat, like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Or the second subbeat, like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. everything we have learned so far and just play random. Breaks are so important because without breaks our music will sound like a solid concrete wall. It's during the break that the listener has a chance to breathe and perceive to breathe and perceive the music. So no 
breaks, no music. Actually, I think it's a problem for many musicians, including myself, actually, to remember to add a sufficient amount of breaks. When playing, we are too much focused on showing off, instead of being cool, relax, and enjoy. So, try to play a phrase. Enjoy. Play a phrase. Enjoy. Be cool. Don't lose your temper. Don't be desperate. More is not better. And remember that it is the brakes makes the phrases and the music. Okay, let's proceed to step six. Move the hand grip to different positions like this. Right now we move the grip up and down with semitones. Look at the hand grip. It's played with the thumb and the index finger. And the two notes are separated by a minor third interval. Now, what we do is that we simply move this structure up a semitone. And up a semitone. And down the center, and we are back home. A good idea is to exercise this through all keys, like this. Then you'll get to know all 12 positions for our hand. Try also to move the hand grip up and down in minor thirds, like this. We can also move the grip up and down with whole tones. Everything is possible. Isn't that just wonderful? When you feel ready, add some breaks and just play around. Now, if we use our big ears, we can hear that each position has its own qualities. Some positions sound really off. Some positions sound more inside a specific tonality. Now, this lesson is not about music theory and scales, so we just have to trust our ears. And often, that is also the very best thing to do. So, we just experiment, try out new positions, and we listen and we evaluate. For example, try to move the hand grip up with perfect fits from our original position. So we go up a fifth, up, 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 and up. These positions sound more or less like we play inside a well-known tonality. Don't you agree? Now, try to do the same trick just a half step above. Now, this sounds more harsh like we play all the tonality, right? 
So we can play inside and outside. Playing inside and outside is a great way to make contrast in music. Now, just fool around, experiment and listen. And now I forget to add some breaks. Not good. So, be cool. That's better. Listen to your band members. What are they doing? Try to play together with them. Ready for step seven. Add two more fingers like this. Now we are ready for step seven. Add two more fingers like this. So here we have our original two finger grip, a minor third interval. Then we add another major third interval with the ring finger and another minor third with the pinky so now we have a hand grip consisting of a stack of minor and major thirds try to exercise the grip and move it up and down with semitones like this With this exercise, we get to know all 12 positions. Now, try to move the grip around with, for example, minor third intervals. some breaks and just fool around. Try out different positions. How do they sound? Now try to move the grip up with fifths like this. This sounds like inside positions, right? same thing, a half step above. This sound more like outside positions, right? So let's play both inside and outside. Step 8. We now make a complete five finger hand grip by adding the last missing middle finger. We place the middle finger right between the index and the ring finger like this. And well, you know the drill. Exercise up and down the keys. Play swing eights. Play all three sub beats. Remember, 
over the exits. Try out different positions. Go up with Peps. Maybe do the same thing a half step above. Please notice, we do not have to play all notes inside our hand grip every time we hit a new position. The idea is that inside my head, I just think the entire complete hand grip. So my fingers are ready, so to speak, ready to press down all the keys of the grip. But I don't actually have to hit every key. So we may just play three notes from the grip like this. cases only a single note at each position like this. But very important, don't ever make the same finger play twice in a row. So this is not allowed. Because if you do like this, you will get a really awkward piano fingering style and it will not be suited for playing fast. So always choose a new finger for each note, okay? Now, are you ready for step 9? This step is about repeating phrases. Listen, here we have a simple phrase. Now, let's play the same phrase as semitone above. Or anywhere, actually. Phrase is really easy to repeat at different positions because we use the same piano fingering, the same hand grip, no matter where on the keys we go. Let's try out a new phrase. The idea of this exercise is that you invert, invent your own favorite phrases. And then you exercise these phrases at different positions. This way you will develop your own style, your own personal jazz sound based on the hand technique. Are you still here? Congratulations! We have reached the very end, step 10, the final but also very important step. It simply says, have fun when you practice the other nine steps. Fun helps motivation and motivation helps music. So try to practice together with the backing track that I will play for you in just a minute. Try to use your ears while playing. Start with two fingers only. Start by making things simple. Make things sound good before moving on. Take one step at a time. Have patience and enjoy your work from the very first step. And you will improve fast. If you feel for it, you are very welcome to make a small donation on PayPal or Patreon. But you certainly don't have to. All my videos are free and for everybody, money or no money. 
If you anyway would like to donate, I will of course be very grateful and you will help me cutting down the hours at my regular job as a city bus driver. With your donation, I will be able to make even more music lessons here on the new jazz channel. You can also just subscribe or maybe give me a like and you give me all the support I need. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Mm-hmm.